Hey everybody, this is Cassidy Rankin with Planet Labs. And I often get the question, uh, you know, why would I use Planet Scope 3 meter imagery when I already use Sentinel imagery, which is Sentinel 2, which is 10 meter imagery. And um, I wanted to go through an example of, of showing the difference. It's, it's actually, it's difficult to conceptualize um, and understand the value add of going from uh, what is freely available open source Sentinel satellite imagery to a more resolved pixel, which is a, a, a commercial data set. And specifically, you know, when you can see large areas at 10 meter resolution, you feel like you're getting most of the information you need. So it may not matter if you're missing little details here and there, but I'll, I'll walk you through an example of, of just exactly what you are missing, especially if you're looking at vegetation or built environments or most of the things we care about measuring remotely with good accuracy. Accuracy that helps us make decisions. So I'm gonna jump into an example here where we look at the three meter versus the 10 meter resolution. And what we're looking at here is actually um, a snapshot of a 50 centimeter image. This is from our SkySat satellite. So to give you a nice visual reference, um, this is in color infrared, and this is looking at a burnt area. I'm actually gonna go to a, a background base map. And this is just outside of a, a community that had some recent wildfires over the past uh, year. You can clearly see where the vegetation is burned. So here we're looking at, um, um, I believe this is 30 to 50 centimeter resolution imagery. And, you know, obviously if we're looking at where resolution matters, you might first say, well, why not use very high resolution imagery everywhere? Uh, and realistically to use, um, you know, sub meter resolution imagery for your work at scale is not practical. It's not cost effective. Um, unless you have a very large multi-million dollar budget, you're not going to expect to get up-to-date sub-meter resolution imagery uh, for your analytics and monitoring needs. So that's where planet scope imagery comes in. We do image everywhere every day at a three meter resolution. So you can measure and manage and monitor um, changing landscapes and changing features of interest. And um, compared to a 10 meter grid, um, we're, we're going to look and see the difference. So here's a, a bit of an exercise. So taking that um, 50 centimeter imagery, I've just created a vegetation mask, um, effectively looking at the greenest or the brightest um, photosynthetic material in the scene here. Many of you will be familiar with an NDVI metric. This is actually a green chlorophyll index built on the near infrared and green bands of light. And uh, let's say we wanted to look at tree survival, post-fire tree survival, individual tree mortality. So we'd want to look at a, a burnt area the year after a fire to see which trees kind of green up again the next year. In this example, we're taking um, you know, the, the 70th percentile of a greenness index to show us where our happiest, healthiest vegetation is. I've just created a simple mask. Uh, let's uh, load in our 10 meter grid. So this is effectively the grid size you would see from a Sentinel satellite. Um, keep in mind that the Sentinel-2 imagery, many of the spectral bands are actually collected at 20 meters and 60 meters. So those are resampled at a, a lower resolution, two to three times or two to six times the resolution of this grid. And if I zoom in here, we can start to see uh, the amount of kind of mixed information within each one of these 10 meter pixel or grid cells. So clearly we've got some green vegetation, some, some dead and brown vegetation, some ground. As I move over to the urban environment nearby, we can kind of see, you know, some pixels will have signals from rooftops, some will be from roads mixed with vegetation. So Already you can kind of conceptualize where you're gonna have uh, some challenges in separating out uh, features that are smaller than that individual 10 by 10 meter uh, pixel size. So let's switch over to the three meter grid. So now we're looking at the resolution of planet scope base maps. We do generate analysis ready base maps, which are cloud free pixels, 
composited over a weekly, a bi-weekly or a monthly uh, time interval. So very temporally consistent, cloud-free analysis, multispectral imagery. And as we zoom in now, we can start to see we're getting a lot less of this mixed feature that makes up that three meter pixel. Go back and forth to turn on the 10 meter grid again. So roughly, you know, three by three uh, pixels in each of those 10 meter grids. So about nine times the um, information or spatial detail that we get within each one of those grids. Uh, so there's a good uh, kind of visual exercise of trying to tease apart what's contributing to um, the signal you get in one of those planet scope versus sentinel um, data sets. So what I've done here is effectively taken that, um, that vegetation mask, summed up the amount of those pixels that are contributing to each one of the 10 meter and three meter grids, and then created a, a layer of uncertainty for trying to detect those, those live, healthy, happy trees within that 10 meter grid. So if we go back over to our burnt area, turn off that 10 meter grid, turn off our tree mask, let's get back to the imagery. Here's what the detection probability effectively looks like at a 10 meter grid. So the probability of detecting uh, those, those living trees, uh, those healthy green growing trees within a sentinel image the darker the green, the higher the probability that that will show up as a, um, as a, as a result in some sort of model or, or index-based analysis you do. Uh, you can see here clearly we're missing a lot of vegetation when we've got a lot of lighter green pixels that are effectively very low certainty measurements uh, of those trees of inches we're trying to, we're trying to detect. If I go back over here to a neighborhood, if we're trying to do like an urban you know, vegetation analysis, you know, there's, there's a couple areas here where we've got very dark green pixels that are picking up trees uh, with very high confidence, at least the green, healthy, happy trees. Um, but again, they're going to have a lot of mixed pixels. If I zoom in on this pixel, for example, we can see the very light green, very low probability of detection is clearly a, a strongly mixed signal within that 10 meter grid. Let's contrast that to what you would get from a planet scope based analysis. So now I turn on that three meter grid. There's the probability of detecting those trees, at the three meter resolution. And obviously we've got a lot more dark green and we've got a lot more of those features resolved. Um, here we're still seeing some of the vegetation that's that's not showing up, but that's just based on the threshold I set. My uh, my my 70 percent threshold, I, I can obviously change that to a different threshold from the index, but Compared to the 10 meter data, uh, we certainly got a lot more high confidence uh, measurements of the feature of interest. And this could translate to any type of model you're creating. So if you need precision and you need accuracy, there's actually a significant difference going from a Sentinel data set to a planet scope data set, going from that 10 meter pixel to that three meter pixel. Cause you might think it's, you know, only a third uh, lower resolution, but it's actually nine times uh, loss of information, nine times lossy uh, and lower, um, you know, precision, spatial precision. So again, comparing, contrasting, um, you know, we're obviously picking up a lot more information in Planetscope and we're getting a lot more precision, especially when we go into an urban environment where uh, precision certainly matters and you definitely want to have the detection of as many of those features of interest you're looking for, fewer false positives. So if we're thinking of this as a probability map of detecting something with good confidence, you know, let's, let's compare that again to um, a 10 meter based uh, data set. You're going to have a lot of uncertainty in what you're picking up with that 10 meter pixel. So just a conceptual exercise. I find it helps kind of visualize this. Uh, from this perspective where we're looking at what is contributing to the signal within a 10 meter grid versus a three meter get grid uh, where is that value coming from in in using commercial satellite data uh, versus open source data and it in my experience you, you can't take actions or make decisions on information that's low confidence uh, you you certainly um, wouldn't put your money on something that um, that doesn't give you good confidence in, in the decisions you're making 
And that's where, you know, planet scope resolution and scalability and affordability of scale uh, to detect features uh, and phenomenon of interest is going to make a, a pretty significant difference.